to Arc Tutorials. This is testing concept series in which I try and cover all the concepts that are equally important for both developers as well as our QA teams. These concepts are equally important for you to grow in your career. As you grow along, you will come across these terms and you need to be familiar with all these concepts. Keeping in that in mind, I, I have created this series. Today is part eight of the series where we are learning about accessibility testing. This is uh, part number eight, episode number eight. Uh, if you have missed out on the previous episodes, I'll request you to please check them out. Um, all are important concepts and equally important for you to remember and grow in your career as well. Also, there will be a continuity in learning. So make sure you see all the episodes which are there in the playlist. All right, so now let's talk about what is accessibility testing. Accessibility testing is the process of evaluating how well a computerized system or application can be used by people with disabilities. There are certain standards and guidelines that have been set aside uh, of how an application should be behaving. And that is keeping in mind with people with different uh, disabilities like uh, visual impairments, hearing impairments, mobility impairments, etc. Classic example of a person who has only one hand, right? Um, he should still be able to navigate with keyboard, right? Easily. A person who can't see clearly or has color blindness, he should still be able to use it. So our colors, uh, the palette that we use has to be nice and uh, compatible. If somebody cannot clearly see things, they should be able to hear it using screen readers etc. These are some of the examples and classic use cases uh, of accessibility testing. Accessibility testing helps us um, find any potential barriers, right? And trust me, why this is most important if you ask me is because to avoid legal and compliance fees. Any person who is disabled and wants to use an application which is a public facing application, especially large uh, enterprises like a bank or e-commerce, so those things, uh, they, they can sue or they can file a legal complaint against the banks and public uh, pro websites and applications. So that's why all our apps and websites applications should be thoroughly tested for accessibility and make sure they support it. Also, it improves the overall usability, user friendliness and inclusiveness of a system. All right, so I will talk a little bit more about why accessibility testing. I'll give you a few pointers that you should keep in mind. <clears throat> so reason number one is it's a matter of fairness and equality, right? Uh, people with disabilities should have access to the same information, technology, uh, application access, just like any other one. They should not be excluded or disadvantaged. Accessibility testing overall adds up to your usability. Like I said, give you an example that if a person uh, only wants has one hand and or maybe some fingers are missing, uh, unfortunate, but let's say the same with person who has uh, both hands and fingers can still be able to use the keyboard, right? So it adds up to the overall user user friendliness and accessibility of your um, application. Also, you are trying to reach to a audience which earlier was not able to use your system. <clears throat> Using these accessibility settings and um, making your application accessibility compatible, you can get new customers who can use your application or system. Now I told you, especially public facing systems or applications, government websites, applications, banking, all these are legally bound to support accessibility standards. All right, so now, <clears throat> now that we know why it is really important, let's talk a bit about the tools uh, that are available for accessibility testing. There are various tools uh, that are available in the market and which a lot of leading enterprises will obviously be using. Uh, some of the common ones are screen readers that's available in your Windows system as well if you search for it. So screen readers will basically extract the information and put it out an audio output. Right. So basically it will read the whatever is there on the application or the document and will just read it out. That's an excellent way because people with uh, visual impairment, right? If there is some color blindness, they can't see, they can still be able to read the hear the entire document or the web page using screen readers. 
The next is keyboard simulators. I told you that uh, you should have short, like if you don't want to, if somebody cannot use a mouse, right, or some other uh, pointing device, they should still be able to navigate your application using keyboards. That's why one reason developers add is um, tab index zero, right? If you know developers, you'll know that you add tab index zero. When you add that, you will be able to navigate through the keyboard. So that's a good example as well that how it beautifully improves your whole overall uh, application. <coughs> then you have color contrast analyzers. So there are some standards of color palettes that you will use, um, that you can use because like I said, if somebody is colorblind, uh, there are some uh, leg legability and uh, readability aspects and there are some compliance rules. So you can use only certain shades of certain colors uh, because they'll not be too hard on the blindness, etc. As a matter of fact, uh, I read it somewhere that Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, also has some kind of visual, um, uh, <clears throat> I don't know. Again, it's I read it somewhere, I'm not sure, but comment in the comment section, you let me know if you have heard that rumor or if it's true. All right, so next one is uh, HTML validators. Um, validators, we all know that we will make sure that our syntax structure uh, they're all well coded according to the industry standard because a lot of times search engines, SEO, spiders, web crawlers, data uh, scrapping, all those things will come in handy with the HTML validators. Finally, you have some premium paid licensing uh, tools which are part of accessibility checkers. Uh, what they do is they run through a, a system and they will find out all the things that are missing as part of your accessibility uh, checklist. So these are all the common tools and uh, process and um, process and I would say uh, common utilities that are used for accessibility testing. Let's talk about some of the common use cases real quick. <clears throat> So testing the accessibility of web applications and websites, right? Uh, so you have, uh, we use screen readers, keyboard simulators, color contrasters, <coughs> HTML validators, etc. Then testing the accessibility of mobile applications is also important. Uh, we do the same process, process is same. We use simulators like uh, browser stack, um, then you have Lambda test, etc. to check all of those. Then testing the accessibility of documents. <coughs> Now this is one important thing because a lot of times if you look at uh, banks or uh, any other leading public facing applications, uh, they have to host certain legal documents, uh, they have to host some pricing documents, uh, contract terms, etc. Now those PDFs or HTMLs that need to be compatible, they should be easily able to access and readable, right? Not just accessible you open the PDF and your screen reader should be able to read it for them, right? So those are the important things. Again, I'm uh, highlighting because even if you have done 100% of your application, if it is not accessibility tested, chances are that your legal team will not approve it to go live. Now, similarly, um, accessibility, electronic forms and other online tools, uh, any forms, registrations, access, uh, account creations, all of this should be able to easily um, be able to navigate through them, through fill uh, details, should tell the validations, what mistakes they have, etc. Now testing the accessibility of software applications and desktop systems. Uh, again, the same thing applies for even uh, desktop based uh, client uh, systems, uh, not only web applications, but desktop apps also needs to go through the same process. and. Basically, every application and system should be certified for accessibility. All right, uh, <clears throat> so here we'll take a quick look at the advantages, okay? Now, um, better search engine optimization, I told you, if you are if you have the correct HTML syntax, if you are following the correct guidelines, uh, if you are following the correct syntaxes, the correct structure, uh, the semantic web structure, uh, the search engines and the search crawlers will be able to easily pick it up and the visibility of your application increases. It 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 is a, there is a sense of commitment CSR from all the leading enterprises. So improved usability for users with disability, right? That's the whole point of accessibility testing. Uh, greater user satisfaction and engagement. 
right so once people with disabilities also start using it uh, there would be much likely satisfaction and overall engagement will be more more business more loyalty and more brand building legal compliance now in many countries there are laws and regulations that require websites and applications to be accessible to users with disabilities right so like i said if you are building in for any large enterprise any large big client uh, you have you are bounded by that uh, legal compliance that you need to be accessibility certified uh, that's a legal uh, requirement in a lot of countries <coughs> last thing uh, cost saving uh, so if you look at the long run of a, any web application right um, the legal fees the legal action lost customers lost business uh, potential converts of buying your products in your shopping cart etc so there are a lot of cost attached to it hidden cost <clears throat> and that we can definitely avoid by making our websites and applications uh, accessible and certified with that all right uh, that's all on the accessibility testing i hope uh, the concept is clear and i hope some fundamentals are now clear why we require accessibility testing what are the different process and tools that we use um, what are the complications if we don't follow accessibility testing <coughs> all right so that's all about in today's episode uh, as part of the concept series uh, in the next episode i'll cover about uh, smoke testing and if you like my work and tutorials please continue buying me coffee at uh, buymeacoffee.com/arttutorials thank you so much for joining i'll see you in the next episode we'll learn about smoke testing in detail thank you so much for joining